Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is IK Bengo and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Ibadan. And I'd like to wish you a happy new year and a prosperous one indeed, because 2020 was quite sketchy, but nonetheless, this year we hope for better things. And without further ado, let's jump right into this topic. How to study medicine in Nigeria. What do you need to know? How to go about it? And the things you need to do, the steps, the options you have, the pros, the cons, and um, let me not talk too much and please join me. Thanks for staying tuned and if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified anytime we post any new video. And on social media, we are Pendica on Twitter, Pendica on Instagram, so you can follow us there because we post regular uh, articles and journeys of different people on our website so you can read it out and there's definitely one or two things you can gain from it and for easier navigation on this video we're going to put a timestamp to help you move across to questions or discussions topics that are particularly important to you or better still you can just watch across the video throughout the video to get the full gist about what we're going to say we're going to be categorically talking about three major things the schools in nigeria where you can study medicine how to get into these various schools the options the opportunities you have and the last section we are going to talk about my own opinion on and advice on how you should go about it getting to the university each year is difficult and the number of applicants into the various universities in Nigeria keep increasing increasing but the number of schools are actually not so much that they are still pretty much the same last year and even this year and this makes it difficult for people getting into medical schools because the number of medical schools in Nigeria are not so much because not all universities have medical schools in the first place so when you are planning to get into medical school it is advisable that you do your own research to know okay where which where am i based in and which school is close to me however if you do not mind the location of any school and you feel you can move across cities and towns to go to university education or tertiary education that's fantastic so you have no um, barrier in terms of choosing what university based on location however if you have a preference you is best you do your your research and know that okay there are certain schools in my town and do they have a medical school there if they don't have a medical school then you look for the closer one the closest to you and then you make a pick from that which brings us to the types of university we have generally we have the private university and the public university and the private universities are generally or mostly owned by churches and also owned by individuals that are well to do that set up their own institutions and all that. However, not all of them still have private uh, medical school in it, so it's also good you do your own research. After you've done your research, there are pros and cons when you decide I'm going for a private university. Also, public university. Public universities are schools owned by federal, by the federal state, or they can also be owned by the um, state government. Medical students in public universities in Nigeria pay a range from 20,000 to 150,000 naira, and this may include accommodation and may not include accommodation. However, it's important that you know that some universities, some public universities have added fee like professional level, which increases their school fees and when you add it to accommodation, it may be over 150,000 naira. So that's another thing you should take note. For the university you go to, the fee differs across all federal or state universities in Nigeria. But in private university, yes, it differs also, but generally speaking, it's always safe to say that medical students in any private university pay over 750,000 naira per annum. And also the fee increases as you go up in your medical education so what you pay in 100 level is different from what you pay in 600 level ideally medical school is supposed to be a duration of six years but in private university you actually spend a considerable amount like it's usually six years or maybe six years and maybe two months extra depending on how they run their calendar in public schools the probability of you spending six years in 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 medical school is almost zero because you have the possibility of going to have an ASU strike 
you have the possibility of going to have doctor strike, you have the possibility of having a lot of strikes. It's not Johesu strike. So all this compounds and increase your stay in, in the university over six years. It could be six, it could be seven years, and seven years is usually like common term. Even public university, we know we say by this term that medical school is six plus X. X is unlimited. We do not know how long X is. So that's what something to consider that private university stick usually to that span of six years, six months, and depending on how you get into the university. But however, it's ideal to say that private university, you get to spend six years and strike did not affect them. They did not have all those incidents, um, doctor strike that affect their curriculum. But if you're in public university, you can spend as much as eight years, even if you do not have a receipt, even if you do not have to repeat a class, you can spend as much as eight years in a public university. Yes, depending on who you are, it may be expensive for you to go to a private university because of how much you get to pay per annum and all that. That may be a drawback to some people, but that may also not be a drawback to a certain set of people. Because getting into a private university is actually easier compared to getting into a public university. Getting into a public university, you get to write exams with a lot of people, and your competition is virtually anybody, everybody in the science class that has decided, or we, usually they didn't decide, that has been forced or casual into coming to medical school. So please, you have to know that getting into, into public medical school is really difficult. It's very daunting. And I'm going to explain that process in the next section of this video. But getting to a private university is relatively easier. A point one noting is that public medical schools have strong affiliation with the best teaching hospitals in Nigeria. And that is why I see schools like University of Ibadan having strong, the medical school having strong affiliation in University College Hospital because that's how you train your student. When you get to the clinical aspect, the medical students in University of Ibadan are taught or are lectured, are given access to the teaching hospital, that is University College Hospital. And that's how they get trained. But some of these private universities do not have access to these best best teaching hospitals and but recently things have changed like they now have their own teaching hospitals where you can some people can even go for residency and then they are taught however it's also worth noting that um, because they are states they are federal owned um, universities they have access to teaching hospitals owned by the federal federal state and transitioning into these hospitals or not when i mean transitioning i mean for their clinical rotations, that is a benefit also. However, some of the lecturers that teach in the federal, in the federal universities and state universities now also lecture in private universities, and so students are also getting some of the benefits of that they that the federal counterpart gets by having lectures by the same professors, the same medical doctors, and okay. But I just feel that is an important point for you to note that. Um, some of these private universities, most of these private universities do have access to um, the best teaching hospitals in the country at the moment. Please, if you feel I've missed any point, like any advantage or disadvantage of going to the private or the public university medical school, please leave a comment in the comment section so that someone out there can get this and uh, to be of help to that person. Now I'm going to talk about the criteria and process or requirement for you to get into the medical school whether it's a public or a federal medical school, I think we all require, they all require the same process, just that in the private university, there are some specific um, details that you may not need, but in the public university, you may need them. So the first part is choose secondary school. Students who just graduated from the science class or the, are moved or admitted into medical school after they take some exams and meet some qualifications. Why the second pathway is through um, direct entry. Direct entry is another pathway where you come through A levels or you come through A to having another degree and then you slide into the 200 level class. The third pathway is through having a pre-degree but not all schools, not all universities have pre-degree options, so that is another option. So those are the three major parts where you get to go into medical school, depending on the university you pick. As a graduating student from secondary school, studying, I mean, when you finish science class and all that, it is required that you, you 
take the West African Secondary School Certificate Exam, WASEC, or well, some, some of us call it WAEG. And important that you have five credits, and these credits, at least five credits, credits in mathematics, credits in English, chemistry, physics, and biology. There is something I said earlier about medical students uh, getting admission into medical school in public university being tedious. And because it is tedious, one of the reasons is because we get a lot of applicants and then when you start selecting, you select the best out of this. I said you get five credits, right? But if you're going to a private university, if you're going to a public university, you do not get five credits. You are required to get at least five, <laughs> sorry, pardon me, like five A's. You get A's in all these schools. You are meeting people coming from other schools with A's, with B's, and you want to be like the best there. So it's actually better you come with five A's, with A's, at, a lot of A's, in your WAIC result, and that will allow you to stand out and considered um, ready or primed for medical school. Also, when you take the WAIC uh, exam, you are required to also take the, you could take NECO, sorry, you could take NECO. NECO is um, mainly used in Nigeria, WAIC is for West Africa, and the same thing applies there, five credits. But however, it's always best for you to shoot high, aim, aim a lot, get five A's, if possible and apply also after you take WAIC or NECO you move into um, what do they call this do you, you take the next exam you take is the JAM exam and the JAM exam is also the UTME exam and I, I can't remember the full name now but I think unify something I'll put it in the on the screen so when you take that the the pass mark over the years has changed. It used to be 200 to pass when I took the exam, but I think it has reduced for some schools to 180. Again, again. So medical schools say you, should, you are required to just pass the exam. But like I said, you're competing with a lot of people if you're going to public school, right? So if you just pass the exam, get maybe 201, and someone is getting 205, someone is getting 290, who do you think they will compare among, they will pick among these three people? So it's actually best that when you are going for any exam as an me, aspiring medical student or a medical student, score the highest. <laughs> do you get? So that's why it's difficult. So like I was saying, you are advised to score above, um, personally I would advise you to score above um, 290, that's going to really put you at a strong edge because there is a calculation factor, like there's a way they calculate it and then they award a cutoff mark for universities, for medical students. However, so not to jump now, after you take the, the JAM exam, the UTME exam, the next exam you take is the post-UTME. The universities are going to call you for post-UTME exam. There's Usually, different schools have their own grading system. So, but in University of Ibadan, they grade hundred. So again, there's, there's no there's no cut off mark here, but you are advised to again score high again. So, University of Ibadan, what they do is that they calculate. They have a metric for calculating a cut off mark for medical, uh, medicine and surgery, or and even dentistry. So, if you are coming to this school, they calculate this cut off mark based on your YX score. They have a grading for each of these. It has a certain percent. I think it's 25 percent for WAIC and 25 percent for post TME for for JAM and then 50 percent for post TME. Sometimes this thing varies. It could be it could switch either way. It's not fixed. Do you get? So that's why I said it's important to score really high in these exams. You score like A has the point, B has their point, C. So A is the highest, B is the second highest, C is the third highest, and it goes on like that. So like I said, score high in your why you connect your exam, score really high in your jam, and then score extra high in your post TME. The reason for this is that they tend to pick the best because they feel like you are more mentally ready, academically ready, sound for the rigors of medical school because there are a lot of things to study, there are a lot of um, topics to go through, videos to watch, and all that. So they want the usually public school will pick the best out of like the highest out of all this because we know, although we know. Exams are not the best test of knowledge, but they pick the highest scoring candidate in each of these exams and it gives them admission. So that's how you get into medical school through secondary school. Right? So the second is actually coming through your direct entry. 
and when you come through direct entry you can either have a pre-medical degree and this enables you to go straight into the 200 level that is the benefit of going through direct entry and when you go through direct entry having a pre-medical degree you just simply start from 200 level and then you go into 500 uh, 600 level then you graduate and most people tend to have done pre-medical degrees in biochemistry in physiology in anatomy in physiotherapy in anything particularly related to uh, relating to medicine or relating to dentistry and it's better that way because if you get to do uh, your pre-med degree in education currently in Nigeria you are not advantageous compared to someone who has done his own pre-med degree in something like physiotherapy in anatomy biochemistry physiology those guys are usually prepared preferred and then depending on the school in which you get to do it you may have to write an exam for getting into um, direct like going through the direct entry path if you have a pre-med degree or you may not even have to however in the university of Ibadan, regardless of if you're coming in through your direct entry through any means whether you're having a pre whether you're having a, a pre-degree already, like a pre-medical degree already, a medical degree already, or you're coming through um, A-levels, you may, you don't have to write an exam. So going through the A-level pass now, which is the other part you can use to get in through direct entry, you get to go through, like I, I think a span of a year at a different educational center. For example, one popular one is EAC in Ibadan. When you go to EAC, like you spend a year there and their own fees is different, and it's, it's, it's separate entirely. You stay, stay here there and get to do exam in physics, chemistry, and biology. And it's also rated A star, A, B, and so on. So the higher you get, the best chance you're getting into um, medicine because each year the cutoff is not stagnant. Sometimes people can do really well in the A level exam and they get A star, and then you'll be surprised that the, the qualification is A star. You have to get A star to, in three in the three subjects to get into medicine. And this is also in addition to your, your work. You should not forget, if your work is not good, if you do not still have all that credit and all that, it's going to still affect you. You still need to have five credits in your work and then do the A-levels, then you go into um, direct entry. So sometimes the people don't score high in direct, in the A-level exams and it may be um, you may not require to get a star or true or you get you get so it, it's it varies that way according to how people pass that's why like i said it's tedious to get into a public school if it was a private university you probably wouldn't need this much stress to get into a private university the third means which is probably the least common because not all universities run a pre-degree program. Depending on the university you're going to, you may have to inquire and um, ask about how the program is run. But usually it's, it's spent, uh, it's a duration of two semesters. And I think the school that comes to mind now is uh, Delta State University, Delta. You can spend two semesters there and then after that you take exams each semester, which is important. Also, the grading, the highest score, there's no cut of mark again. The high score is usually admitted. They have a certain number of students they admit into the medical um, uh, medical school from pre-degree. So it's again survival of the fittest. The highest score wins the game. The highest score is admitted. So that's why the pre-degree is usually not favored. People just and people usually do the pre-degree as like a backup. They also get to do the jam and also with the A, a levels too. They also get to do the jam just in case you have this option. You get so. Again, another trick, this is a trick now, I was, I was giving that trick already but some people may not spot that so I have to like say it again. So some people do A-levels like where they do A-level courses in advanced level courses, not O-level now because WASI is called yeah, O-level, then A-level, they do this A-level and they also take jam. So that one year of doing the A-level, they also take jam that year and depending on whichever one they get favored in, they are admitted. So if they pass, if you pass and they are admitted to the jam link, they get to start from 100 level. They may not be so lucky, so they they have to. They may not be so lucky in the sense that uh, they may not pass the jam and they pass the A level and it gets into 200. So I guess that's being lucky. But you may not be lucky and you may not pass the A level and then you get to go into the jam and that is the benefit of having that opportunity. That that um, different means of getting it into 
um, medical school too. And I think it's important, just in case you do not know that, that you can actually take the A level and then do the jam, UTME, post-UTME means also the same with pre-degree. If the school has the opportunity to take pre-degree, there's nothing stopping you, to the best of my knowledge. Just for me to recap and we all carried along, you need five credits whenever you're applying to medical school. You need five credits and each in this subject you need five credits in math, you need credits in, in English, you need credits in biology, you need credits in chemistry, you need credits in physics. So these are the five credits you need regardless. And then after that, when you go through, uh, when you get that five credit work or NECO, you get to write the jam and the, that's UTMA exam. When you take that exam, it's scored over 400. It's best to score really high. Advantageous people score in the range of 290 and 280 and above. So you get to score really high. After that, you are called up depending on your school for post UTMA. Not all school does but have the post UTMA option. So you're called up for a post UTMA exam, which normally is called over 100. And then, depending on your university, there is a cutoff mark based on, sometimes based on your your work result or NECO, that's the second school living certificate, your know, result there. And then also based on your JAM or UTME score and based on your post UTME score. Depends, sometimes based on two, based on all three, depending on the university you are attending. And then there's a cutoff mark. If you pass that cutoff mark, you're admitted into the medical school. However, if you do not walk through, if you do not go through that means, not all hope is lost. That's why there's also a second pathway. Some people who are admitted into um, into medical uh, courses like physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, physiotherapy, and they are done with that course and they say, okay, you know what, I still have a passion for medicine, I still want to do dentistry, I still want to go for to become a doctor or a dentist. They can also come again into the medical school through the direct entry pathway and then they get to start from 200 level and move to 600 level, do you get? So that means not all hope is lost. If you do not go through this pathway, you feel uh, me having to study a four-year course or a five-year course or do pharmacy just to come into medicine is quite tedious, you can actually go again and study um, go for A level course class and courses, take the A level exam, and then you get A star or all true, best for you, or you get A. Depending on the cutoff mark for that school, again, you are taken into A level, you are taken into direct entry through the A level program. And that is good. However, do not forget, you still need your credits. Again, it's common, it's a must. You always need that. Then after that, that is another option. That is actually good because you just do the A level for one year instead of going through a four, a pre, going to do medical courses relating to medicine for four years and saving. And that's again, you have to save. After that, you have to save before you can go through the A level. Mean. And then the final rule before we forget is that of the pre degree program. Not all universities have this, but should the university you want to go have this, this can be a backup option in case you are not coming directly from secondary school. So this is like a comprehensive way of how to get into medical school, highlighting the various ways, the various options you have and how to get into it. Always advising you to score high and get the highest possible score. Else you have to like probably go to public schools, uh, uh, go to private schools, which, which are technically or usually more expensive. But if you have the finance for that, if you have the budget, the money for that, why not go ahead? But generally speaking, in all of all this, is it advisable? Is it best for you to do medical school in Nigeria? That is another important factor for you to consider. If you have that much money, why don't you go overseas? However, it's left for you to make that decision finally. And it's important that you should know that to study medicine or dentistry is not something you just um, decide uh, sporadically. It's not something you do out of peer pressure. It's not something that you do because your parents want you to do it. <clears throat> it's something you should actually make the cautious effort to, to make it your thing. Make, have a reason for you to go through, uh, go to medical school. Because if you do not, along the way, you may start regretting and having gone through all this rigorous process you may not like the outcome and you may not like medicine as a whole and if you've not seen our video why you should not study medicine i think you should check that video out and um, the link should come up at the top of the screen and please 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 go through that video check it out if your reasons do not fit that was one of our first posts the reason we made that is that so that you know that 
it is good to study medicine but then sometimes it's not for you despite the fact you know your father is a doctor your mother is a doctor you have to look internally introspect a look in yourself and find out okay um, is this for me if it's not for me then i have to do something that truly resonates with who i am and um, and after that if after all these you still find it that you need to study medicine please go ahead it's a very fun course and it's something that i that brings joy when done properly and please why not go ahead please and study medicine and thank you for staying to the end of this video if you did stay to this particular part of the video please leave a clover emoji and please like i said leave a clover emoji and that's how we know that you got to the end of this video and thank you so much and don't forget like share subscribe to this channel for more content like this and if you've Watch this video so far, check out other videos and stay tuned. It will be.